Part of being a safe pesticide applicator is understanding the laws and regulations that govern pesticide use. In this program, we'll be providing you with information regarding federal and state pesticide laws and regulations. To begin with, the federal pesticide law is called FIFRA, and that stands for Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rodenticide Act, which was passed by Congress in 1947. The Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, administers FIFRA, and this includes the classification of pesticides as either general use, GUPs, or restricted use, RUPs. If a pesticide is an RUP, that means that a pesticide license is required to buy, apply, or supervise its use. Hi, I'm Claire Lawning with EPA's Office of Pesticide Programs. Other than certain exempt low toxicity products, all pesticides sold and used in the U.S. are required to be registered by EPA. There are over 700 active pesticide ingredients, which account for more than 20,000 different primary labels. The federal label, Section 3 label, for pesticides must be followed. An applicator must use the product according to label and apply only to sites that are identified on the label such as crop species, turf, roadsides, or structures. After a label is approved by the EPA, it receives an EPA registration number which is specific to that label, the active ingredient, formulation, or other criteria. Each product also receives an EPA establishment number, which identifies the facility where the container was filled. Once the pesticide label is approved by EPA, Nebraska will register the product and then it is available for sale and use. The label is important because it provides specific instructions to protect the applicator, environment, site, wildlife, pets, and consumers. Remember that the label is the law. Sometimes states may have local needs that require modifications to the federal label in order to accommodate them. This is known as Section 24C of FIFRA and is a change submitted to the state agency by the chemical company, usually to add a new site or use. If there is an emergency where a certain pest is causing extensive damage and needs to be controlled, a Section 18 emergency exemption is an option that allows the use of a non-registered product for a specific application. It is important to note that FIFRA and state laws complement each other. State laws can be more strict than federal, but not less strict. EPA works closely with the Nebraska Department of Agriculture, the NDA, the regulatory agency in Nebraska responsible for enforcing the Nebraska Pesticide Act. This law was enacted in 1993 and became effective in 1995. The Act covers pesticide registration, compliance, use, and enforcement in Nebraska. NDA also works with the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, who serves in an educational role, providing training materials for the state's pesticide applicators. There are 14 pesticide categories in Nebraska, including ag plant, ornamental and turf, aquatic, structural pest, right-of-way, public health, and fumigation. There are also three subcategories, soil fumigation, demonstration and research, and regulatory that can be added to a license with a parent category such as ag plant, structural, or ornamental and turf. Regardless of the category, pesticide use is regulated by the Nebraska Department of Agriculture under the Nebraska Pesticide Act. Because of the potential danger of pesticides, NDA wants to ensure that applications are done properly and safely. If you apply pesticides, you may be visited by a pesticide inspector from the Nebraska Department of Agriculture. We are now going to take a look at what a pesticide inspection is, why it's necessary, what the inspectors will be looking for, and what is expected of you in the event you are inspected. Hi, I'm Doug Miles from the Nebraska Department of Agriculture, or NDA. Here at the NDA, we're responsible for enforcement of the Nebraska Pesticide Act, the NDA also enforces federal pesticide laws and regulations under a cooperative agreement with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA. If you'd like a copy of the state or federal law, the NDA can provide it. 
NDA is responsible for the enforcement of the Nebraska Pesticide Act across the entire state of Nebraska. We have five territories to which we've assigned a pesticide inspector for each territory. The pesticide program field staff's purpose is to monitor the safe and legal handling and use of pesticides. We have three primary objectives in regulation, to protect applicators from excessive exposure, protect humans, animals, and the environment from unwarranted risks of pesticides, and to ensure compliance with state and federal law. Anyone applying or selling pesticides in Nebraska must obey the laws and are subject to a state inspection. This includes commercial applicators, including both aerial and ground applicators, pesticide dealers, private applicators such as farmers, and others that purchase or apply pesticides. In the best interest of the public, the Nebraska Pesticide Act regulates pesticide distribution, storage, transportation, application, and disposal. There are many different types of inspections and we'll take a look at the examples of each. These include pesticide use inspections, complaint investigations, dealer restricted use sales records inspections, and applicator records inspections. Each year the pesticide program conducts many inspections. NDA conducts both targeted and routine inspections, but there are no goals for the number of pesticide citations or penalties issued. In fact, all monetary fines collected by the Department of Agriculture help fund educational programs in Nebraska. The first type of inspection is the pesticide use inspection. These inspections are conducted in many settings, including lawn care, structural pest, aquatic, or agriculture. A use inspection is not a long involved process. Normally it would take 15 or 20 minutes of your time. Hello, I'm Dan Mylar, a pesticide inspector with the Nebraska Department of Agriculture. Usually when I conduct a pesticide use inspection, I try to determine the location of the application and what pesticides are being applied. I also make sure the applicator is properly certified for the type of chemical being used. Today I'm going to do some routine inspections of both lawn and aquatic applications. Hi there. Hi. How are you doing today? Good. I'm Dan Myler and I'm an inspector with the Nebraska Department of Agriculture. I was wondering if I could speak with you for a moment. Sure. Great. I'm performing some routine pesticide use inspections in this area today and I noticed that you're applying a granular product to the lawn. I was wondering if this was a pesticide and if so I'd like to watch your application and make sure that you're following the label directions. Okay, sure. Great. Can I see your pesticide license please? Okay. Great. Brian, thanks. I see the ornamental and turf category on here. And it looks like it's up to date. The applicator must be certified in the appropriate category if a restricted use pesticide is being applied. Persons applying lawn care or structural pesticides must be certified for both restricted and general use pesticides. From there, the inspector will ask about the pesticide being applied. It looks like you're treating this lawn for crabgrass. What are you using? I'm using a granular pendimethalin and I'll make sure not to get any of the product on the sidewalk, driveways, and curb areas to help prevent runoff. Good to hear. Would it be possible I get a label from the product? Yes, I have one in the back of my pickup. Thanks. I'll just go take a look at that and you can go ahead and begin your application. Thanks. The inspector needs to review the pesticide label. Applying a pesticide to a non-labeled crop or site is a serious violation. The inspector will check the application rate. It's illegal to exceed the pesticide label rates. Other information the inspector may check or ask for includes the weather conditions, approximate temperature, wind speed, wind direction, worker protection requirements, and the potential for pesticide leaching to groundwater or movement into other water sources. The inspector will also determine if the label requires the treated area to be posted as part of the Worker Protection Standard, or WPS. If so, he or she will check to see that it's been done correctly. It's important to note, if the label says you must do something, you are in violation if you don't do it. Likewise, if the label says not to do something, then it's a violation if you do it. Ryan, everything looks good. I just have one more question for you and then I'll let you finish your work. Okay. Do you keep records of all your applications? Yes, yeah, so in a folder in my truck. 
Great. I'll just go take a look at those and then I'll let you go. Okay. Thank you very much, Ryan. You bet. Our next stop is to observe some aquatic applicators that are treating an irrigation ditch with Cutrine Plus for algae. I spoke with the irrigation district manager earlier and he informed me what was going to be used during the application and he provided me with a label. As I observe the application, I'll be looking to make sure that the product is being applied at the proper application rate. This copper-based product is designed to travel a considerable distance downstream. Therefore, my inspection needs to make sure it is applied at the proper rate and not released into areas that might affect crops or other aquatic sites that aren't intended to be treated. In addition to application procedures like those observed by Dan during his inspections, another thing that NDA inspectors look for is proper mixing and loading procedures. Hi, I'm Maggie Dunn, another inspector with the NDA. Since pesticide labels usually have mandatory requirements for personal protective equipment, or PPE, I review the label to make sure the people who mix and load pesticides are wearing what is required. In this way, we ensure the people who handle the most concentrated pesticides are safe and protected from chemical exposure. I will watch the person mixing and loading the pesticides as well as the applicator once the application equipment has been loaded. Hi, I'm Maggie Dunn, an inspector with the Nebraska Department of Ag. Hi, I'm Sam. If you don't mind, I'd like to observe your mixing and loading process today. Do you have a label? Uh, sure, right here. Go ahead and continue on with your work. Will you be applying the pesticide or is somebody going to be doing that for you? Uh, no, someone else is taking care of that. The label calls for Sam to wear long sleeves, long pants, a chemical resistant apron, and chemical resistant gloves. He has all of these on. It also recommends either goggles or a full face shield to protect his eyes from potential splashing. Since Sam is wearing all of the recommended PPE, he is in compliance with the label for this mixing and loading task. While Sam finishes mixing and loading the chemical, I will look at the application equipment to see if it is set up correctly according to the pesticide label. Sam said he does not apply pesticide. However, some mixer loaders do also apply pesticide, and when this is the case, I will watch them for several minutes and see if they are wearing the correct PPE for application, which can be different from mixing and loading. I will also make sure the pesticide is being applied according to the label. The inspector may ask you about rinsing, disposal, and storage. For rinsing, triple rinsing, or an equivalent method like pressure rinsing, is necessary. The final action of any pesticide application has to do with disposal of leftover chemical and empty containers. The NDA finds the most harmful effects from pesticides comes from the improper disposal of waste chemicals. Therefore, pesticide inspectors will check to see that applicators are correctly handling these leftover chemicals according to the label directions, and that the empty containers are recycled or disposed of correctly. The inspector may also ask the applicator questions about the worker protection standard. These questions might include how the applicator provides notice to farmers, nursery managers, or other employers, and whether the employees that handle pesticides have been properly trained. At this point, the inspection is complete. The applicator may be asked to read and sign some paperwork. NDA leaves copies of any paperwork the applicator signs. If there is a violation found during the inspection, enforcement action may result, but it's not the inspector that usually determines the action. The inspector can issue a stop use order if they believe the pesticide use will create an imminent hazard to people or the environment. Enforcement may simply be a written advisory letter, or it could involve the issuance of a civil penalty for repeat or serious violation. A person with a violation serious enough for a penalty is always provided an opportunity for an informal settlement or a formal hearing. Serious violations could result in fines, revocation of certification, and in the most extreme cases, criminal prosecution by the state's attorney.